Hello everyone and welcome to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. So I'm gonna start over again from my colonization series in 0.24 and in 0.90. So uh, with some trepidation I'm going to abandon the progress we made there. But I have learned a lot so hopefully we'll do things in a much more structured way. Once again just like in that series uh, the focus is using the USI colonization mods to get Kerbals to spread across the Kerbal system. Uh, so that is our goal. And I also want to try out reusable systems as I did in that series and make a pattern of that. So we'll try and start that as soon as possible. Now I'm going to be starting a fresh career save. So we're going to start new and we're going to call it colonization in USI career and normal normal difficulty because we want a head start uh, we do want to get on with the business of colonizing as soon as possible I'm not gonna go easy uh, you know what uh, maybe we can tweak it a little bit uh, we, we will have more starting funds maybe I don't think I even need more starting funds I'm so used to doing stuff in hard mode anyway yeah uh, let's just keep it like this I as a rule I don't revert flights or uh, do quick loading but in the case of bugs, which may occur with all the mods involved, I will uh, reserve that as a possibility. Okay? And uh, so we'll leave it at that. Let's just go with normal mode on that. Okay? And right now I don't have the EDB flag in here, so I'm using the USI flag. Okay, so we have extra planetary launch pads. We have all the mods that I had in the colonization series. So if you saw a mod in there, you can expect it in here. So that is the basic idea. We have far, we have deadly reentry, we have all those things, real shoots, and so forth. Now, one reason I wanted to uh, go with career mode from the start is so that I get my feet wet with all the modded parts, and also I wanted to see what the tech tree is like with all these mods. And so the mod list will be provided in the video description, so you can check it out there. I'm not gonna list them. We do have Venn stock revamps, so the stock parts may look different. And they may be weird glitches like the heat shield popping up there. That's interesting. Okay, so yeah, things will occur, but we'll try and work through them. But for now, let's take a look at our starting parts CIT target cube. I don't even know what to say about that. Oh, there's another part that's sort of appearing over there. What's that one? The procedural SRB, I might have guessed. Okay, so yeah, we've got some weird things going on, but let's see what our starting situation is like. Let me build our first rocket after picking up some contracts. A standard contract situation. We've got a max of two, so we do have to unlock the buildings, and so we want to do that right away. But uh, yeah, scientific data from Kerbin and uh, first vessel, sure. Uh, we'll hold off on escaping the atmosphere for now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is what we've got for Probo 1, our first probe. You can see we've got parts that we don't normally have in this phase of the tech tree in stock. We've got the Probodobodines Don't Stay Putnik, and actually this one has an SAS stability unit, so that's interesting. Uh, so that's not normal. I don't know if I approve of that, but hey, uh, at least this means we don't have to start with a Kerbal right away. We've got goo units as our only science. We've got these Communitronskis as our communication things, antennae. And you'll note the fins like this, and that's because I want to land this back down safely. Uh, in the beginning, it'll be able to control itself with the gimbling on the engine, the Vanguard. Actually, the Vanguard has much gimbling. Uh, that's because it's got vernier thrusters attached to it. Uh, so going up should be relatively safe, maybe. Uh, the problem is coming back down again, I need to make sure it's oriented properly so that we land on our feet. And you can see the only feet we had at our disposal are these fixed landing gear. So that's why I used. I'll, I'll avoid the demolition charge for now. Okay, so that is the plan. Uh, I like these, the way, th I think it's Venstock revamp that made this one. Because uh, just when you put a tank on, it creates that mount. Look at that. So that's pretty nifty. Alright, so let's try this Probo 1 and see if it works. Okay, for now we will do a short hop. Let's do a GUI experiment on the launch pad. Okay, keep that for now. We'll only transmit if it turns out we can't bring it back. Throttle up, SAS on. 
And go. We probably don't need that much acceleration. So we've got scatterer and uh, environmental visual enhancements and stock visual enhancements in. So things should look good. I do not have curb insider. Oh, oh. Okay, well. Ooh. Ah, uh, far. It's actually a uh, Sputnik now. Far ruined my fun. Dang it. Oscar C fuel tank failed due to aerodynamic stresses. Okay. Well, we have to accept that. There's no, uh, there's no revert. Uh, let's, uh, well, okay. I guess I have to watch it or something. Well, this has gone like, uh, very traditional rockets, ro rocket program, yeah. Uh, nothing, nothing too surprising here. Our first rocket exploded. That makes sense. All right, so let's be a little bit more gentle about the acceleration this time. So maybe the engine gimbling that we have may not be enough. Let's just try a short hop. I mean, that should do the trick. This time we won't go to the speed of sound. We'll only go a uh, little ways up. Let's observe Mystery Goo. Okay, keep. All right. Say us on, not so much throttle. If we tried to spin stabilize, that would cause problems for the way back down. I'd have to add another set of fins. If you were thinking about that. Let's observe the other mystery goo. And let me just... Oh, it's flipping. Okay. Well, we'll keep that data. I'm just trying to burn off some fuel to make us lighter. Not that that's strictly necessary. Let's see if we end up orienting properly. Given the fins, you know. Let me take SAS off. Okay, um, that one. Okay. We have to be very careful about the throttle here. Oh, oh, uh, we, we, oh boy, hold on. Uh, all right, I'll take it manual. Jeez. Plop. Uh, well, we're not gonna stick the landing. Okay, we lost a fin. All right, let's recover. Okay, so, uh, 15 science gathered. We got most of our funds back. Let's take a look at the contracts. He wants to test swivel, test a Mark 16 in flight over Kerbin. Well, I think that we can do. Uh, so we'll have a we'll have a Kerbal go on a short hop first, maybe on a sickle or a flea, which would make most sense. Probably let's try the flea first. It says at the launch site, so that should be fine. Flea looks a lot better right now than it usually does. Well, we didn't need the mob propellants. Well, let's see if we can fulfill the requirements without getting rid of anything. So, what we want is flying 2, two kilometers to 7 kilometers, 140 meters per second. Let's see if that works out. We could dump the blade of shielding, too. No sound? Well, we're going to be going faster on the way up, but we need to be. Uh, we'll see how fast we're going on the way down is important. Let's do a crew report. Keep. He may be lawn darting on the way down, we'll see. Okay, let's go.
Well, until the chute fully deploys, he's gotta be in a precarious position. Okay. Parachute deployed. Okay, don't tip. Alright. Looks stable. EVA. EV report. Precarious position. Keep. Uh, let's get the crew report. Take data. Alright. Board. I'm not gonna have him do the surface sample just yet. Okay, and get another crew report. Okay. Recover. So that should take care of all the things. Let's send uh, Sputnik into orbit. Okay. Very good. And Jeb's back with one experience. So, we want to escape the atmosphere. Doesn't say a Kerbal has to be in. Hopefully, that's not a requirement. Well, we'll eventually get Kerbal up there anyway. And orbit. So, this will be our first attempt at an orbital rocket. This is the probable. As you can see, a state Putnik, two inline goo containers. We unlock the inline goo containers. And uh, obviously, the antennae. Uh, this is not going to stay in orbit. We're going to try and bring the whole thing back down, but I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Uh, we've got parachutes. As you can see, uh, two drogue chutes and two main chutes. Uh, that should be enough. And then these are the flicker engines. We could have used the Vanguard for more power, but I wanted this to be a more stout rocket so that I could land safely. And, um, yeah. Uh, I, you know, the Vanguard could be a good choice. We might switch it out if it turns out that that's a good idea. Uh, the Flicker doesn't have the greatest ISP. What does have is a uh, short body so that the landing struts, which we also unlocked, can extend below them. So yeah, I've uh, unlocked some technologies and we're just going to proceed along the way. The procedural fuel tanks are constrained. We can't uh, change their shape. And they're about the same size as these tanks here anyway, so no point to use them unless we wanted the specific texture, but these tanks look just fine. Alright, so let's bring it out to launch pad and see if it works. Aha! Oh wait, I think I've encountered a problem. Can't support vessels over 30 parts. Okay, unable to launch. Uh, 35 parts. Well, okay. Uh, I guess we can deal with this. Uh, the State Putnik will not have four antennae. It will have two. And we will have to see if it can balance... No, just two. Alright, and we can see if it uh, can balance on its landing struts. Okay, that gets us to below 30 parts. Let's move the landing struts up so it can sort of balance on its engines just in case. Okay, so just going past the atmosphere and hopefully into orbit. Let's see. Let's get Smart ASS ready. And go! Okay, Smart ASS is in control. Let's retract the landing gear. Now, uh, FAR might still want to flip this. We'll try and keep it steady. Uh, there's, there's a possibility FAR does not like this arrangement, especially with the blunt end on there. But we still haven't unlocked fairings. We've got a lot of goodies, but no fairings. Mm, a little bit wobbly on the... yeah, it's very wobbly. Oh, okay. Yeah, Smart ESS, not very good. Hmm. Very strange. Maybe I should add fins. Here, uh, let me try and catch it. But I think I should just abort at this point and try and rescue the rocket. It's got a lot of control though. Gotta say. I mean, all those engines gimbal by 3 degrees. We've got 5 engines on the bottom. Maybe we can still get to to space. It's possible. I'm very, very optimistic here. What the heck? Uh, we're, we're going down already. Do I really think we can get to space? I don't know. 
problem is, if we try and put fins on, that'll go above our part count. We might have to unlock the building. Well, we're going in a northeasterly direction, as it turns out. Let's just get to space. Well, that's a fine apoapsis. Observe Mystery Goo. We'll keep the experiment. I think we'll bring it back. Okay, that's space, observe mystery goo, and keep that one. Alright, let's go back down. I don't know if it'll orient properly in the atmosphere or not. No fins. Okay, here we go. The heat and all. SAS off. Well, okay, well we're through the heat. That's not bad. G forces. Okay. I'll wait until a safe time for drogue shoots. Okay, we should be safe for drogue shoots, really. The main shoots uh, indicated safe a lot earlier than I expected, by the way. Is that a real shoots thing? So, we may be landing on a pop. Well, it looks like we're missing the buildings if you go by the, by, by the city terrain there. So I guess it's all right. We're we're in a park or golf course or something. Okay, main shoots. By the way, the probodobodine comes with its own decoupler. That's why we have a decoupler there. Now we've got main shoot deployment. Boy, they're huge. And six meters per second. Okay, and can we recover it? Can please? Oh, it's shaking. It's shaking. Uh, okay, I got recovery. Okay, 27 science earned. Uh, parts have been recovered. 92.9%. 100 kilometers away from the KSC. Alright, so maybe we should just uh, send a Kerbal to orbit, darn it. We've got a lot of funds. We could upgrade this to have more than 30 parts. Let me take a look at what I want to do. Alright folks, so I've unlocked the ability to EVA with 75,000 funds and so we are going to send a Kerbal to orbit, have that Kerbal do some EVA reports and then bring them back. And uh, now the pod, when you have stock part revamp, does have, I believe a shielding, hold on, why can't I pick that up? Okay. Uh, but I don't trust that anymore after my experience in realism overhaul where the ablative shielding on the pod itself was definitely not enough. So uh, actually I'm going to dump the ablative shielding on the pod and I'm just going to have a proper heat shield. I know that's uh, wasteful but still I think I feel a bit safer about that. So there we go and decoupler and then this. Now this is an RT3 NAT. I don't know which mod adds it, maybe stock extensions, maybe stock parts revamp, but it's got a nice vacuum ISP for an SRB, and it's just got a moderate amount of thrust, and it burns for a minute and 13 seconds, and so the, the Kerbal should be quite comfortable with that kind of G-forces. Gives us 1,276 meters per second in vacuum, so that's great because it only costs 100 funds, and it allows us to bring back down our main stage which is a single swivel here so we're gonna try and use stage recovery to recover this okay go away Nat go away go okay uh, and uh, we'll have four parachutes on it hopefully that'll be enough we've got fins I don't know how stage recovery will handle it but we'll see how it works uh, let, let's see uh, does, do we have a stage recovery button here okay stage recovery button what does stage recovery have to say about this? Oh, uh, uh, okay, this stage, yeah. Six meters per second. It says that we can recover 100% of it with the parachutes that we have right now. I think that's what that means. And it also means that the capsule, which is that portion, we will touch down at 4.5 meters per second. So, okay, we will see if that is true. We should have enough Delta V for orbit. This time, we will send Valentina up and we'll see if this works. This could be very risky. Probably is very risky, especially with the parachutes not in the right stage. 
Okay, let me just verify that doesn't change anything for Sage Recovery. No, it doesn't. Alright, I've called it Ulysses 1 on a whim. I didn't have any plan for that. And I don't think I'm going to continue the same reference further on, but that's just what came to mind. So we have 9, 29 parts out of 30, so pretty close. Alright, let's see. Throttle up, SAS on, and launch. I don't know if I should trust Smart ASS anymore. Yeah, I don't think I've got to trust it for this launch. Could be that I need like a FAR plugin for MegJeb or something like that. There's been one before. Alright, we are through the speed of sound. Approaching max Q here. Oh shoot, I forgot. How do I bring her back down? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, how do I bring her back down? Hmm. That's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Okay, we're gonna abort the orbital portion of it. We'll just bring her to space. Yeah, we're in space. She's just going to space. We'll test the recoverability of this now. But we'll just dump the uh, this stage. Yeah. That was an ill-considered concept on my part. Yeah, let me just uh, dump the SRB. So she's got to come right back down. Oh, uh, we t I picked up a contract to test a swivel, so did that. So we did fulfill a contract anyway, but we should get a crew report now that we're in space. Yep, keep experiments. Uh, we can EVA. EVA report, keep that. Board. Okay. We won't hit a different biome. Okay, we have encountered the atmosphere. Um, world's first milestone, we got that. Spacewalk in orbit of Kerbin. Still no word about the recovery of our stage though. Could be that deadly reentry got it, I don't know. Not deadly reentry, but you know, the reentry heating. Let's see how the ablation goes. Yeah, I mean, very mild. High G forces though. Now, there are no supplies in this capsule. Well, it sounds like the stage blew up. I don't know. I don't know about you, but... Well, that could have been the NAT, though. That could have been the saw fuel booster. Hmm. But it doesn't say recovered or destroyed. Now, we don't have any supplies in here. Where is uh, the life support thing for USI? It's planetary logistics. Did I, I, did I leave out the life support thing temporarily? I think I need to sneak that back in. I think I was troubleshooting it. I think I had a little bit of a problem with it. So far we haven't done anything that was like life support critical anyway. But yeah, let me uh, check up on that and see if it's working out. Now if I really wanted to have exactly the same mods as I had in the previous colonization series, I should put TAC life support in, not the USI life support. But the USI life support has some other good functions. So I do want to use it, but in a pinch I would go with TAC life support just uh, to match what I had in the previous series. And there is an update for TAC life support for 1.1.2. So that's good. Uh, it's not by the same author though. Nice water. That's, that's Scatterer working there. Yeah, I, I don't know what stage recovery did or did not do there. Nice splash. Okay, uh, let's have her EVA. Take data. EVA report. Keep. Board. We want a crew report here. Keep. And let's have her float around. I, I don't know if she can get a surface sample or something else. Come on. No, no surface sample just yet. But from Kerbin's water. 
Okay, uh, grab. Board. All right, recover vessel. So yes, we'll need some sort of RCS system to deorbit her. I think I know just the part. Okay, 25.1 science earned. We recovered, well, we recovered the pod. And Valentina, we definitely recovered. But no word about our um, stage. We have splashed into the ocean, but yeah, no word about the stage, so that's a little bit sad. Stage recovery is in here, obviously. We saw the dialogue. Hmm. Probably it got destroyed somehow. Maybe Ferrum Aerospace destroyed it. Okay, so to facilitate coming back down, I've added one of these inline RCS block rings. Now, I don't think these have, like, forward and back RCS, but we can do some clever flipping in order to bring our orbit down should it be necessary, so I think they'll be alright. Maybe. Otherwise, our Kerbal will be stranded in orbit. Uh, I've packed the mob propellant back into the capsule, and this also has 15 units itself. Is that enough? I don't know. But our other options are limited. I could use this rear guard liquid fuel engine, but it's too small. And so if we put it on there, you can see it's, uh, it's like this. And we end up with a fairing like that, which is ugly. So that would be a great engine because it's got 320 vacuum ISP. But um, yeah, it doesn't look that great. Uh, otherwise, we could use something like the flicker. But, well, that's too small as well. We don't really have a 1.25 meter engine that would work. We've got this flare thing, but that's more power and not much vacuum ISP. It's got 265 vacuum, and so we'd have a huge TWR. We could tone that down a bit, but delta V-wise, it's not great. So that's a problem there. And, of course, it's more expensive than the SRB and we're, we're still paying attention to costs. Oops, uh, another option was to use these radio mob propellant engines, but if you take a look at them, these derp ones don't seem to have brought, been brought up to modern uh, mob propellant standards. They've got 320 vacuum ISP, whereas that's way off compared to what mob propellant engines do in KSP now. So uh, this is like pre-nerf kind of thing, and they've got 30 degree gimbal. So, yeah, a bit overpowered there for this stage of things, maybe later on, but not right now. Besides, they're very expensive. They're uh, 250 apiece, and then there's these inline fuel tanks that are another 250. Uh, that's compared to this SRB, which is just 100. Uh, so we'll try using the mob propellant to deorbit ourselves. And I've removed the parachute since it doesn't look like we can recover anyway. So that saves us some parts. I don't know. Uh, Ulysses 2 then. And we'll send Jeb. Yeah, it seems a bit dodgy. I'll have to admit. Let's hope for the best. Okay, here we go. Throttle up. SAS on. Let's go. Now we have to make sure that we don't get so fast that the, that the booster is going to knock us into a really high orbit. Booster's got a thousand meters per second to work with. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there. We've got apoapsis of 89 kilometers. So we're gonna have to manage that pretty carefully. We'll continue using this engine until we get to 1,300 meters per second in orbit. And then we'll use the SRB. Okay, set. And now the SRB. Will this work? Will this condemn Jeb to an early death? I don't know. 
we might end up in a high orbit. Yep. Apoapsis is 245, call it, and then periapsis is 89, but we are in orbit. So, uh, we have entered orbit, and we completed that contract. Okay, well, uh, let's separate off the SRB. And let's hope the RCS can bring him back down again, but first, we will do some science. We don't need the crew report from here anymore. What we need is other observations. I think maybe around here would be good. Grasslands. Well, uh, let's get the Mechja breed out so I don't have to guess, huh? Oh, it doesn't show biome here. I'll add biome to it, I guess. Ah. Islands. Okay, keep board. Okay, we've got deserts here. Up oh, mountains, there we go. Quickly, quickly. Before the mountains go away. EVA report, chores, got it, board. All right, so I think we've taken care of all the normal biomes in this belt. You know, no Arctic or anything. So, now we're gonna try and bring him back down by dro dropping our periapsis, obviously. So let's go to apoapsis. And try and use the mop pellon to drop our periapsis. I have no idea where exactly that will have him splashing down at, but that's our only choice. Yeah, so clearly we don't have USI life support in here. I need to get that in. I think I had a problem with it. Okay, so given that our thrusters are not your normal thrusters, let me see if they, they work as normal thrusters or not. No, they don't go this direction. So, whoa, whoa, that's, uh, okay. SAS on. Right. By the way. Yep, we're pushing our periapsis down. And we're using torque to counteract that. That's something you can't really do, but, uh, well, we can do it in Kerbal. So we've got the thrust, and we're using torque to balance it out. Okay, that's 27 kilometers. RCS off. No, RCS off. We could just. I don't want to use Smarty SS because that's sort of cheating in this case because Jeb doesn't have the ability to, to go retrograde automatically. Okay, let's see if this works. Mm, I really hope we don't hit mountains. Uh, well, there are a lot of mountains. There are a lot of mountains. Ouch. Okay, well, hopefully Jeb will have his... Well, better luck than usual, actually. I, I was about to say his usual luck, but... Uh, maybe that's not what we need. Okay, here we go. There's the heating part, and then there's the G-forces part. Using a fair amount of ablator, we've already lost 23 units of our 100 that I packed. That's rough terrain up there. Well, I definitely want to get past all this. Maybe around here, it'll be nice and... Nice and even, maybe. Okay, we are through the heating portion. Uh, still facing some G-forces, but it looked pretty mild all overall. I mean, what do we have? 3.6 Gs. 
So next time I want to get some probes and some stuff over to the moon. And I'll make sure we have the life support stuff in so that uh, we can get actually some life support supplies to the moon would be nice. On our first uh, lunar escapades. And maybe to Minmus as well. So we can start the colonization stuff in earnest after having made orbit this time. It's like uh, between 6 and 7 meters per second for a touchdown speed. Pretty high. Oh, okay. Alright, uh, we can get a crew report from here. Yep. And EVA? Uh, can we get the flying over thing? Yeah, flying over Kerbin's Deserts. Keep that. Board. And then we'll get the surface EVA. There's always water right below ground. I don't know, this camera is a bit bugged right now. So far we haven't had any camera problems. I think the problem was hull camera VDS, but this camera is a little bit weird. Yeah, keep... and... climb. Maybe a different camera? No, oh, that hardly helps. Board. This camera is fine, it's just on EVA it's... it's strange. Okay, let's recover. Alright, 59.5 science earned, got some parts back but not really as many as I would have liked, and Jeb is ready, he has advanced to level 1. Let's take a look at the tech tree, we've got 157 science to distribute. Uh, let's not be picky about the basic levels, let's get all of this and, and this. Uh, we know that the, the colonization parts are up here, mainly. Um, I think it's in this one. Yeah, here you see the aeroponics module, Kerbitat, orbital workshop. Um, where's the pioneer module? That's sort of important to us. Well, we, we have some structural elements for it. There's the pioneer module. So that's the first module. Okay, so we wanted to make a beeline for that. Let's take a look at general construction. And this requires general construction. Okay. So, yeah, I like that adapter. I don't know about the trucks, but all right, universal storage. Okay, oh, here's the fairings. I want to unlock better procedural parts, too. I don't know where that happens, but... Oh, the terrier is nice. So many things that I want. And what about down here? We've got the thermometer. Those look a little bit different these days. I really want the terrier. Uh, I'll hold off on general construction just a little bit so that we can get the terrier, which is a good orbital engine. What's uh, this Robin? Seems like a high thrust engine. I don't know what that's for. We'll see. We'll take a look at it. I don't know what the procedural launch pad tank is either. Okay, so let's research that, and then on the flip side, we will research basic science which will allow us to eventually get electrics down here. Okay, so that is where we're at on our tech tree after the first episode, and I hope to proceed quickly through it in the next episode as we aim for the moon. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.